Hello and good evening, this is Ruiz Pozuelo from Curva.com and uh, today I'm going to show you how you can change currencies using a slicer in Power BI. So uh, this is a very, very useful trick, stay tuned. Okay, so today we're going to start from the end. I'm going to show you the results so you see what we will be doing in the video. We will create a slicer that has, in this case, three currencies, but you can have as many as you like. And what we will do is when the user click the slicer, as you can see here in total sales, the total sales value will get recalculated. This is made for Swedish crowns as a standard. And then if I click, for example, here on Euro, it will recalculate to Euros based on the currency that you set in Power BI. Okay, so a slicer that by clicking on it, it will recalculate, uh, in this case, total sales for products based on what is chosen. So uh, let's begin. So first of all, this is the North Wind data set. This is a data set that is free to use. And I have a video showing you how to use it. I will post a link to the description box in case you want to use it and follow along. You will be able to download this file also, so don't worry. So what we have here is a table that has product names and total sales in Swedish crowns, okay? So product names and total sales. And what we want to create is a slicer that changes the currency as the user selects it. So the first thing we're going to do in the video is to create that slicer. So to that, we will go to the query editor and we are going to create this manually. So what we need to do is to click here on enter data. And here we're going to write currency and then we're going to write currency rate. And here we have the Swedish crowns, which is our base value. And then we have euros, which we say is, I don't know, 1.1 to the Swedish crown. And then we have US not there. We have US dollars that is, I don't know, 0 0.8, we say. So here you can put any currency you like and any currency rate that you like or that you need. We're going to call this table currency. Click OK. And here we have it. So now we're going to close these and apply so the new currency table gets loaded into Power BI. And here we have it. So we have now our list of currencies. And let's make this a bit bigger so you can see something. And we're going to make this as a slicer. Now, as you can see, nothing happens yet because we haven't built it. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a measure that tells Power BI which value has been selected. Okay. So we go in here, new measure, and we call it selected currency. And for that, we're going to use the function values. I have a video explaining how values work. So if you don't know, make sure you check that out. But what it basically does is picks the value that the user selected in there. So we have created the measure. Let's see it in action. We're not going to put it there, obviously. We're going to put it in there. Did it end up there? Yeah, no, there. Let's put it as a table. And as you can see, when I pick something in here, it gets that measure is storing the value I selected. And it stores that value. And of course, it gives us the corresponding currency rate value. You see? So this is perfect. Now, what we need to do is to calculate the total sales 
based on whatever the user selects in here. For that, we are going to create a new measure and we are going to call it total sales selected currency, for example. You can call it anything you like. And we are going to use the function switch. If you don't know how switch works, I also have, of course, a video about it. So make sure to check it out. But switch is basically an if Excel statement. Okay. So basically we're saying if alt enter to go to a new row, selected currency is Euro. So that means if the user has pick on the slicer Euro, then do the total sales times the values for the, in this case, we want to pick up the currency rate, not the currency itself. So it's a multiplied currency rate uh, to the total sales for euros. Okay, because we've chosen euros here, the currency rate that will be chosen is just the ones for euros. Comma, Alt, Enter. Go selected currency equal to USD. Again, uh, oops, total sales and then values and then we get currency rate. Ooh, too fast. Currency rate. So it says if the user picks US dollars, multiply total sales times the currency rate for US dollars, comma, alt enter. And if nothing, neither of those are picked, just give us the total sales in Swedish crowns, because that is our base uh, currency for this example. Um, I just have one too many. There you go. So let's put this thing into action. Here we have our new measure. Here is our currency and uh, let's see if it works. So Swedish ground, we should get the same value. Let's pick this up and say that we want no decimal numbers. Now we cannot pick the format here because if I say this should be Euro, then it will be Euro no matter what I select here. And this is not what we want. So let's do that in steps. The first thing is we remove the uh, decimals. And as you can see, it is calculating things correctly. But what we don't have is actually the format, the formatting for the currency. So we need to do this manually. So let's do it. What we're going to do here is we're going to put a format when it calculates the total sales. I have, of course, a video on format, so I will put a link also below in case you haven't seen it and you don't know how format works. But if you know, this is the way we are going to format our currency. So we go in there, comma, and then we put our euro value zero, comma, zero, zero. This is a US settings. That's why I'm writing it like that. And then here we put the dollar like that. And now oh, I need to put, of course, the format too. format. There you go. And then I need to have the last format in there, which will be comma zero comma comma kronor that voila and as you can see it's formatting to text because it gets right justified i don't think this is a big issue 
the important thing is that it actually displays the currency that it should be. So now when we change it, it says, okay, this is the amount in uh, euros. Hmm. 1.5 million, that is a quite heavy um, currency conversion. Something went wrong. Let's check that out. So, yeah, no, that's not what we want. And that is because this is has the American setting, so... Yeah, this is so much better. Okay, so now it is 1.1. 1 .1. So we have euros, Swedish crowns, and US dollars. This is easy, right? So if you are a multinational company or you have sales companies everywhere and you would like to actually be able to easily uh, change currencies, this is a perfect way to do it. And this report will fit everybody, so you don't have to have one report per currency. So I really hope this is a useful trick for you. I think it's quite, quite cool. So this is all for today. If you liked the video, just let me know by liking it or sharing it with somebody you think that would like it too. If you have comments, questions, suggestions about the video, let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And uh, subscribe and hit the bell. I power, power BI videos every week. Have a great evening. Bye.